What's up everyone, welcome back to some more Pokemon Light Platinum. I have no idea why this happened, I really, really, really don't understand at all, but this video is being post narrated because uh, Camtasia actually sped up my previous recording. I don't know why, but it sounded a little bit like this. I have literally no way of explaining what happened, but it happened and I can't really, you know, fix it in any way. I tried to with Audacity, I tried to slow down the audio and like change the pitch, but that didn't even work, so instead I'm having to post narrate this. And because I am post narrating, which I usually don't do, that means I'm actually not gonna have like the same recording, I guess narration quality, so I don't know, I would rather, you know, start a new narration just about something completely different rather than try to redo the narration I had done before. I actually talked about something pretty interesting, um, so I guess I might do that, but I actually have something else planned and, uh, you know, I'm gonna take the opportunity that I have here to do a post narration to actually talk about something that, uh, something that I have actually been holding back for a little bit. And it's actually another one of my stories. Uh, if you know, previously I did a story, I don't remember in what, I think it was also in Light Platinum. I read the story that I wrote, like, back in, uh, 8th grade about, it was about Dante, I think, and, uh, it was back, it was in Spanish, so I had to translate it. This one is actually in English, and it's one that I wrote back in 5th grade. That is a pretty damn long time ago, and, uh, here we are at Devon in Lorne, where we actually have to go back to Carmen City, and I'm actually talking about the gameplay, because while I'm reading this story to you guys, I am still looking at the game, so... I actually was here debating whether I should heal up inside or off screen, so I ended up doing it on screen anyway, but yeah. This is actually a story I wrote back in 5th grade when I was living in Brooklyn, New York with uh, all the little black people, all the little black kids. And that might sound racist, but trust me, I, I don't want to be racist about it. It's literally, there were like 95% of the population were dark skinned people, so. I was literally like the only white kid in my school, and I'm not even white, I'm Puerto Rican, so that's Hispanic, but at the time, I was very, very white, so, uh, and by that I mean I was very pale, so, I will actually link, or, you know, have a picture of myself in fifth grade at the ending, um, I, I was gonna have the class picture, but I don't remember where my mom put that, so, I'll just have a picture of myself with a little label, because apparently they had us label each other by class name, so. I was in class 5, T4, I don't know what the 4 stood for, but if it was based on like intelligence levels like they usually do in high school, um, then I guess I was in group 4, and there were only about 5 or 6 groups, so it's probably not in the very smart class because I was in Puerto Rican education, but either way, I was actually, even though it was my first year in the United States, I was still apparently pretty good at English, so Without further ado, here is my story. This is actually a compilation of 4th and 5th grade students for PS135 in Brooklyn, New York. And it's called Monsters Unleashed, Stories from the Laboratory. I actually need to find myself in this book first. I was in class 5. Oh, there were actually 4 classes, and I was in the 4th one. I don't know if that was based on intelligence, but if it was, then I was definitely in the dumb class. So, I was with Mr. Ricciardi. He was very nice, uh... I think it was a French guy, he was very French, he even, oh no, he was Italian, Mr. Ricciardi. He once brought us Italian ice too, so, here I am looking for myself, uh, class 5T4, so, let me see, what page is my story on? Uh, my story is actually one of the final ones, it's called My Brother Dracula. That is very interesting. One of the kids actually named his story Monsters Unleashed. I'm pretty sure many of them did that because... Wow, one of them is even called Untitled here. So I'll read mine first and then I'll... They're pretty short, so I'll read some of the ones that have funny names. So, of course, there is me, Ariel Rivera, my brother Dracula, page 48. It's not that long, so... Let's see. Oh, mine is actually on the second to last page. So, I actually did some art for it as well. Uh, I think I drew most of the art for the entire book just because uh, at the time I was pretty artistic so I think I had the teacher help with most of the art for the entire book so anyway let me see my brother Dracula on a dark gloomy night when the clock marked 12 a.m. it all happened I pulled the lever and it worked I revived my brother 
but something went wrong. He now had long teeth and called himself Dracula. His clothes had changed to a dark black color. He had a long red cape. His face was as white as snow and his body was really skinny. A few seconds later, he started chasing me, so I ran screaming. Dracula caught me and said, why do you run? I just want to be your friend. After all, you created me and now you're running away from me. I now look, I know I look like a monster on the outside, but I'm your brother on the inside. So please, I just want to be your friend. He smiled and I smiled too, and we both went for ice cream. Well, <laughs> that was an eventful story. I know I probably led up to it way too much, but that was it. I haven't read this since the fifth grade. So, uh, that was me in the fifth grade. That was what I apparently thought about. And I will proceed to reading some of the funnier named stories. And not like funny stories names, but just funny named kids. <laughs> I don't know, I guess. I, I really don't understand, but the some of these kids have really funny names. I don't understand why. Uh, let's see. Kumi Balthasar. What the hell kind of name is that? Kumi Balthasar. On page 28, he wrote a story called Untitled. That should be pretty interesting. Uh, so, Kumi Balthasar, class 5T3. Untitled, as I sit there, or I sit, as I sit here swaying to the direction and current of the slow winds, it feels good. I can smell the bacon and eggs and think it's sausage and cheese. These smells are fascinating. Just yesterday I smelled the placid smell of fabric softener on laundry. I can feel that my body is getting lighter. They are pulling the crabgrass and weeds. They're cutting off my head. Maybe I am going to the ocean. That is a salty type of water to make me grow. I can see the sun, the sun glittering its sparkle. I can hear and feel the ocean water rushing against the shores. Of course I am in the water, that is why I can feel it. The salt tastes, well, salty, I guess. When we start to go home, we pass this mud... What the hell kind of noises are these? What? This kid apparently has a pretty thesaurus-like mind. He wrote the words Melodorous, fetid, noisome, putrid, rank, Busty, musty sewer. Yes, as a plant, I need to know these scientific terms. When we reach homes, they plant me back in. It is 10.45 a.m. They're going to the gym. Nah, I don't like the gym very much. It's now 6. They go to the, uh, um, to the mall. I want to go to the mall, damn it. Why can't they just cut off my head and bring me to the mall? Oh yeah, I'll die. I'm going to eat my sugar dinner. The next morning I am surprised. I've bloomed. Kumi opens the window and starts to sniff, and by the looks of it, he is smelling me and my sweet smell. Even I am happy, doing what I usually do. This is my life. I love it. I am going to live it. Well, great story, Kumi Balthazar, called Untitled. That is... that was really freaking weird. So, I'm actually... I'm, I'm just tired of reading these stupid stories. I'm sorry. Sorry, fifth graders. Sorry, myself, for these stupid stories, but... The book is called Monsters Unleashed, and that wasn't very monster-like, so, uh, yeah. One of these kids actually wrote, Dimitri Dennis wrote a story called The Toy Hummer. Of course, Hummer, that's, wow. Yeah, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Some of these kids have really weird names, like Shaquille Wallace, pretty good one. Um, I don't know, Kumi Balthazar is a pretty funny one. Dami Lola Abgula, what the hell? <laughs> Dami Lola Agbula. Wow. That is a pretty weird one. Jabari Bradshaw. Kalen Giwa. This kid's African or something? This is Marion Iffel. Oh, wow. You know what? I'm going to stop making fun of these people, um, even though they have very, very weird names. And I will instead read to you, finally, the story of the one kid that I always thought was pretty gay. His name is Dylan Hurley, and it's called Big Dog. Um, but also, in my class, I do remember some of these kids. Jamal Black was pretty black. Um, that was a pretty funny one. Uh, Sahai Stephenson. That was a pretty weird one. And there was also uh, this kid that was actually Dominican, but he was really, really white. He was named Samuel Guzman. And, uh... He wrote a story called Big Dog. No, Big Fish. Dylan Hurley read, wrote Big Dog, so. He was a pretty gay kid, so I'm actually gonna read a story. And I don't mean to offend gay people, I just mean I wanna see if he actually wrote something pretty fruity, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Big Dog. I took a walk home and I saw a pit bull. It ran after me. It was black and it had red eyes. It growled. 
I stayed still while my friends ran. The dog ran after them. Then the dog stopped and came after me. Great job, Dylan Hurley. You are a skilled man at writing and such. And that concludes the story Monsters Unleashed by a group of 4th and 5th graders from PS135 in Brooklyn. Uh, now back to the game. I know that a lot has gone on, such as me fighting the rival Silver. Uh, he, of course, is the runner-up in the Johto Championship. So he's going to be another rival, you know, as if there weren't enough already. We had like five of them in the previous region. I guess they're setting up five of them in this one as well. We've already got uh, the girl, Pearl, and we've got the one guy, uh, Yellow, or girl, I don't know. And now they've added Silver as well, so... At this point, I'm actually running around uh, trying to figure out where the mines are, but I actually don't even know up to now when I'm re-recording this where they are, but I assume they're somewhere in Mount Lorne, which I'm actually going into right now. So, penetrating deeper into Lorne, we go climbing up Lorne as well because this is a mountain, and uh, I'm looking for some repels here. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you enjoy that story. It was a fifth grade story. It was probably boring for most of you, but hey, I really didn't feel like talking about what I did previously. I, it probably wouldn't have come out the same either, and that just sounds weird, so. You know, we do have time for one more, so let me see a few weirder names again. A few of the weirder names. Uh, let's see, we got, uh, I don't know, these aren't really all that weird. Shady Lambert Grell. Don't know who that is. Um, Kalisa Guadalupe. It's probably pretty Mexican, so I could read that one. Uh, she wrote a story called Brownie G's Vacation. Let's check that one out. Brownie G. Sounds pretty cool. I remember on the night of December 17, 2004, a woman and her two kids came out of a 30s, 38th van with Damon. I kept my cool and didn't try to bite them. I think I kind of remember them from the last time they came in 2001. They stayed for about three weeks. I think they came for three weeks because they wanted to spend vaca Christmas and New Year's vacation in a new place. They treated me really good with food. On the first day, they went to Mount Royal, Caraco, to see their relatives. When they came back, all they could talk about was bad roads and how they almost misbalanced and fell. The next day, they went to church and they were counting the days until Christmas. They also said that they'd had met cousins they never knew they had the day before at church. On that Monday, after they woke up from the mosquitoes and fleas, they went to the beach with me. I did with I did the doggy paddle in the water. On the same night, they went to the crossroads to see the lightning on the Christmas tree. I heard them saying that they went by Papa's house before they lit the tree. I don't understand these. This... Oh, God. Benjamin Hall. I just read some of these words, and, uh... I don't know. This is this is pretty bad. Funny is laughter. Funny would be dressed in yellow. Funny has a voice like Bernie Mac and jokes like Dave Chappelle. The Wayne's brother would be in Funny. If Funny was a person, everyone would enjoy him. Funny would have a clownish personality. I'm, I'm going to stop reading. I just thought the <laughs> Dave Chappelle and Bernie Mac, really? Oh, well. Olivia Huggins. I remember that girl. I don't, I don't, I don't remember her appearance, but I remember the name, so... Shanene, that's... Wow, I can't believe someone was actually named Shanene. Isaiah Gurdon, who's a pretty funny guy, he started saying Holy Turtle for some reason. I remember that about my childhood. Um, there was also Tisha. Tisha, who kept singing that song about, uh... She ain't got no money in the bank. Kadisha Fowler. She's got some... She's pretty fat, I think. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, uh, please remember to leave a thumbs up because I will actually be now putting a picture of myself in the fifth grade. So, yeah, I realize this was probably pretty crappy for most of you, but I'm sorry. Next episode, hopefully, Camtasia won't screw up my recording. I won't have to read this, but thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you guys next time. I don't know.